Not only a full review, but today I have a number of real world and movie slash TV builds for this car, so let's get started. Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Vapid Dominated GTT, based on the 1969-70 to Ford Mustang. The one you're seeing here is done up like Tommy Egan's car from the TV series Power. Now I must admit this is something I've never seen but this specific build was a request from Christian so Christian I hope this has come out the way you were hoping it would. Of course this car is a fastback design and Tommy's was more of a notchback design there's not much we can do about that but I think the colour has been captured really nicely. Moving on to the Dominator GTT in general, is this car a dead ringer for the real 6970 Mustang? Well the answer is of course no. When you compare it with photos of the car there are a number of small detailed changes and of course the whole time you're driving it you're wondering why you have five vertical tail lights either side rather than three. However the important thing is that the car is, and I use this phrase a lot, instantly recognisable. This car was released into the game nearly two years ago in the Tuners update with a cost of 1.22 million which wasn't too bad. But of course once you've unlocked the trade price which comes randomly through tuner level reputations that drops it to $915,000. Really in today's economy that's not a huge amount to have such a classic car in your garage. Of course not just classic but extremely customizable as are all the tuners cars and talking of that there will be a build sheet coming later for all the builds I'm going to show you so there's no need to try and guess them right now. We'll see how it drives properly on the track but on the street the ease of driving is the main thing that you notice with this car and the other thing is the engine note which is rather higher revving and a slightly higher tone to the exhaust than I think you would expect from an early muscle car what I'm expecting is rumbling, bassy, V8 burbling from twin pipes. That's not actually quite what we get. I started my Beta Dukes review by asking, how many Beta Dukes do you think you should buy? And to be honest, it's the same question with this car. Not only is it iconic, but there are so many builds that you can make on this car that it's not true. You're limited really only by garage space. One of the most classic of all the 1970 Mustangs would be the Boss 302. This car had two very distinguishing features. Firstly, the hockey stick side stripes, and secondly, the outer two headlights being removed and replaced with grills which led into vents, presumably to feed air into that hungry V8. As you can see, it's been possible to build a very close replica to the Boss 302 here. Now I have used a unique crew colour to replicate this pale yellow but there are many other colours you can use and for example I've used ultra blue to recreate grabber blue and you'll see that in the outro of the video. I'm struggling to find a negative but I will say that they have used grills to cover the headlights but they have not removed the headlights so at night the impression is not quite so well carried off. We'll look at more builds after the hot lap. When this car came out it shot straight to the top of the muscle car class in Bruffy's testing and that's why the one that you're seeing here has every performance modification, even the turbo at the risk of making turbo noises because I do like to have one example of the fastest car in each class. Before this we had things like the Clique, the Pisswasser Dominator, the Yosemite. They were all harder to drive than this car. What you notice about this car is you have good acceleration, good braking but also easy cornering. The car really does grip and whilst you can occasionally have oversteer, it's limited and easy to control. It is a little limited in top speed, so any long laps the car is not the best, but overall an easy car to drive. However, just a few weeks later the Dominator ASP came out and that car completely crushed this one for being even easier to drive and even faster, so unfortunately no longer the fastest in its class. Of course you knew this one was coming and you don't need me to tell you what it is, but I will. It's the Mustang of course from the film Bullet. Now this is not my build for the car, it's a build made by Digital Car Addict and the video is on YouTube and I've linked it down below. I'm not going to list this in my build sheet, it's up to you to watch the video and take them from his video. I highly recommend you watch it, it's a fun video anyway because he likes to start these sort of builds with a little recreation of part of the movie using GTA assets. 
This takes us back to the question of how many of these GTTs should you own? I have two, one fully upgraded done up as the Boss Mustang that you've just seen and this is the second not upgraded at all in my movie car collection. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. Another car that a lot of people would like to be able to build is the John Wick Mustang. Now again I don't want to step on Digital Car Addict's toes when he's done such a good build for that car as well, also linked down below. I have two more ideas for you from last year's garage tour. Unfortunately, I can't put them on the build sheet. I no longer have the cars, but Roman's Mustang from Fast and Furious 6 is a pretty easy build, looks very effective. As is this racing Mustang, which is very easy to do, just standard orange paint delivery and a few things you can work out for yourself. Here are the build sheets for both Tommy's car and also the Boss 302. You can either screenshot them from here or download them as PDFs from the Discord. There's a link below for that. If you've had value from this video so far, please, please could you smash that like button. It would mean so much for the growth of the channel. Time now to rate the car out of five stars. For looks, I was quite tempted to go five stars, but there's so many small changes, including, of course, those tail lights. I couldn't quite make myself go there, but it's a good four star car for looks. It's very close to the original car. For driving, I'm going to go four stars again. I've taken off the one star for no longer being competitive in its class, but otherwise this is an exceedingly good car to drive. You may however find the excitement levels are not quite as high as you had hoped because of the lack of typical 1970 Mustang oversteer. In 2021, assuming you had waited till you got the tuna rep level for trade price, $915,000 was already a pretty good price for this car. Roll forward nearly two years with the in-game inflation and it's a very good price for this car. Remember we have all that included customization, all the different things you can make and still pretty decent performance for a muscle car. So definitely five stars for value. I'd love to know your thoughts on the Dominator GTT or any of the builds I've shown. And especially, do you have a build for this car that we haven't talked about that you think is worth sharing with people? If so, please put that down below. If you've got this far in the video, well thank you very much. It also probably shows you like real cars in GTA, so you may well consider a sub to this channel. I'd like to thank Christian very much for suggesting both the Tommy Powers build and asking for this review. And to thank all of you so much for watching.